be seated. Welcome in, welcome in. We're really glad that you chose to be here today in this space to just relax. I know some of you probably traveled this week and come and just after being on the road, because I know we were on the road and got home late last night, so I am glad to come and spend time with my church family today. Uh, if you are brand new, I hope you could take time to go see Kim Patterson out at the Connection Center. She can help you get connected to new songs. She can tell you about our small groups, our, our different mission opportunities that you can be a part of, and how you can be a part of our new song family. If you're watching from home, Sarah Herndon is your host today, and she'll be sharing all that information with you, too, to let you know how you can be a part of our family. 
And I'd like to invite Pastor Chad to come up and give us some announcements. Woo! Hi. Uh, good morning. I, I've, I think some of you have had gravy this morning and coffee, so you're a mixture of wanting to take a nap and wanting to get hyper. Uh, it is, that's the story of my life, really, really, right there, gravy and coffee. Uh, I am so glad you're here today. Uh, look to your neighbor and, uh, on either side and say good morning. Some of you are at home. Uh, you can look to the right or the left and tell something in the room. Good morning. Um, I want to make you aware, tomorrow is a big day here at New Song. How many of you have a right arm? Could you just hold it up and make a muscle for me? It, this would be where mine is if it weren't here. Um, they, they do a lot of work with your right arm tomorrow. Uh, some of you will prefer your left. Uh, both are uh, able, but we have a blood drive tomorrow. Red Cross is going to be here tomorrow. Uh, I just wanted to, to, to tell you about it. Um, we have 30-some slots filled. If we can get up to the next level, you know what's about to happen? They throw in some extra staff, and, and really, uh, it becomes a whole different event. Um, Derek, did you want to say anything about this tomorrow? So we're at 35. There's 42 empty. That's a record for us. That's right. They have some leftover King Kong Godzilla t-shirts. All in staff. All right. <laughs> So King Kong Godzilla t-shirts, uh, you, uh, you could be one of the nine slots that are still available. But here's the rest of the story. You still have time to not only register your neighbors. So go in uh, right now and, and scan in on that barcode. You can register the person sitting beside you right now or yourself. Uh, but what I really want you to do, because all of you are so healthy minded, you forget to eat and drink today. And really, if you want to have a, a good perk and flow in uh, you know, like they do with the, the maple syrup. If you want to get that out of you, we got to start on you today. So just put some water in you, uh, put some red meat in you today. Some of you come in with low iron almost every time. I don't know why. Uh, start pumping iron, if nothing else. You all, are you coming cold? I don't know what it is. Warm yourself up. Wear clothing. They make these things in your closet. Put them on and, and come in not cold and drink today. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate to the point where you just got to go all day. It's an essential. And then y'all are looking at me like I'm weird. But trust me, when you make the effort to come in, you want them to tap, perk, and take. And, and instead, y'all come in and you get mad at us. And, and we don't have any control over your iron. True story. Uh, there's a lot we cannot control. That's but one. Uh, so that's true tomorrow. If you could come in and donate. Uh, I want to also make you aware, tomorrow we start a Monday Lunch Bunch small group at 12. So maybe you combo these two events. I'm just suggesting you could do a lot of good and get a lot of good. Uh, tomorrow we have a knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door uh, small group. It starts at noon, and uh, it'll be for the next three Mondays. So if you're interested in that topic, it's all in your bulletin. Uh, let us know that you're coming. We'd love to have you. It's for the next three Mondays, lunch bunch, and that's how you segue away from blood drives. Youth group, uh, suaders are happening this Saturday. Some of you have been down there. We uh, like to go golf. Uh, not golf. What is it? Go-kart. And uh, there's some other stuff. Laser tag, arcades, um, all kinds of junk. So if you don't mind and you want to drive, we'd love to have you help drive us down there. Um, but we'd also love to take a big, huge group of fun youth down to Swaders. It's this Saturday. You can read about it in your bulletin. Be the church day. Uh, in two weeks, this is going to be a biggie. Be the church. We will not meet here. I uh, know. Some of you just said, oh, I get a week off. No, that's the unchristian thing to think. What we want you to do is to make it to heaven. And in order to do that, we need you to come over. Oh, now everybody's a critic. So we want you to come over to, um, to Shady Grove United Methodist Church, right over by the hospital. And what we're going to do there is kind of a hearts and hands Sunday, but in the spring. And we're going to combine with Shady Grove and Mechanicsville and New Song, three Methodist churches all getting together. And we're going to go serve our community. We have hundreds of people who are lining up, like five, six, seven hundred people are getting ready. And you all are a big part of that. So we need you to register today to get the project you want. And in order to do that, you can take the QR code in your worship program right now and register your neighbor to be here together on the 21st of, of, of uh, uh, April. And our worship band will be playing. Our worship band is going to kick us off. We're the pep rally that day. 
So we're the pep of the pep rally, amen, and we're going to have fun. So we will start with a real brief worship service, and then we're going to zoom out into all parts of our community, do a ton of good, and then... Here's the clincher. You're all invited back to have food back at Shady Grove when it's all done. And tell the miracles and the stories that you've seen God do. So, any questions? Great. Look it up in your worship <laughs> program and you can uh, log in and do the registration. Register your neighbor right now. Uh, interest meetings, we have a lot of stuff going on. King William has a meeting right after church. And then again, we have another Bi Vacation Bible School interest meeting coming up in two weeks. So, if any of the things, if you care about others... Um, now's the time to, to get plugged in. Uh, the children this summer are going to have a great VBS. We need your help. So that's in two weeks. Put it on your calendar. And uh, King William, as we reach out to the east, we're going to involve all of you in uh, short order. But today there's a strategy meeting right after uh, service. The last thing that I want to tell you about, speaking of, how many of you use toilet paper? Am I right? Uh, we call it a necessity. Remember supply chain issues and we couldn't get it. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, paper towels. So remember, is it over? Is it under? I'll never be forgiven for that sermon. I know if you were here, then I still get jokes weekly about the, the toilet paper. Um, it's a long story and I'm not going to repeat it, but we are collecting toilet paper and paper towels for Cornerstone out in King William. So every time you use a paper towel this week, every time you use toilet paper, I want you to count the number of squares and bring in that number of rolls of either one. Um, I'm just kidding. I didn't know where to go with that. I was like, they're either really quiet because they you just don't care. Can you spare a square? I know. Did you see it? They don't care. And they're like, uh, I don't like him. Okay. But at any rate, I'm going to go to uh, BJ's because I figure I'll start with uh, the local box store. We'll get some paper towels and some toilet paper. When we went and we ran uh, the turkeys and the food distribution, I can't tell you how many people asked us for things that you may take for granted. Um, adult diapers uh, was one of them. We had people desperately in need of those. We had people desperately in need of toilet paper, uh, feminine hygiene supplies, and paper towels. Uh, we're doing two of those this month. We're going to come back and do a drive to help them out with some other supplies later on. But could you do that? I mean, these are basic needs. If you're getting some for your house, just double the order and bring it in, and we'll make sure it gets over there. We don't want to make it too complicated, but it would help us help them in a big way. Can we do that? Yeah. Look to your neighbor and say, let's do that. All right, I think you've done a great job of persuasion. Uh, would you stand up together this morning if you're able? We're going to do so in a prayerful way. Let's sing loud, sing proud, like we know what we're doing. All right, let's sing to the Lord. You were the word at the beginning, one with God. Name it is the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name. 
continue this morning with what he's done. Jesus set me free. Look at the wounds that give me life. Grace flowing from his side. No greater sacrifice. What he's done. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, and I praise God for what he's done. 
Pray with me. God, we just sang your praises. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for letting us come in here and watch from home or wherever we're watching from today. Just come and be still with you. We are still rejoicing a week later at your risen son. Thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. This tree is over 300 feet tall, estimated to be at least 600 years old. And that's nothing. There are trees towering over this forest that were just seedlings when Christ was walking on the earth. How deep do you think the roots are on a tree like this? 100 feet, 1,000 feet? The truth is a tree this tall can't grow roots deep enough to support itself. 
That is why redwoods have intertwining roots. They support one another. These trees literally do for each other what they can't do alone. I think Jesus demonstrated that same mindset for us, that we're all in this together, supporting one another. I mean, think about it. He never just passed somebody by leaving them stuck. Jesus was constantly intertwining his life with those he came in contact with. He called people out of obscurity to join him in his journey of changing the world. He healed a blind man with mud. He restored a chronically ill outcast with merely the hem of his garment. He renewed one woman's hope for second chances and, and reminded a Pharisee of his need for mercy instead of morality. Jesus' ministry was constantly intertwined with people, connecting with them on the most intimate levels and changing their lives forever. Jesus called his followers to love people the way that he loved them, to bring help to the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, touch the untouchables, and as you have been treated generously, so live generously. And that call hasn't expired. Yeah, his charge to the church is just as clear today as ever. Therefore, may we be rooted in Christ, intertwined with one another, so that we may continue his mission. Well, good morning, church. It's good to see you. It's good to be seen. Good to be seen. Before I begin, I have a special announcement. You ready for a special announcement? I did a thing yesterday. I know. Uh oh. So y'all know I have Fiona, right? Twelve-year-old golden girl. Love her to death. I know. It's going somewhere. Yesterday, I picked up an eight-week-old golden retriever puppy. I know, don't worry, next week he'll be in the bulletin. <laughs> His name is Murphy. Say Murphy. Murphy. You guys will have the opportunity to meet Murphy, I'm sure, after all of his vet visits and all that fun stuff, but figured why not? You know, life is crazy enough as is at a puppy. So I got a 12-year-old and an 8-week-old. <laughs> so I was up last night at 12 and 3 and 5 and 6. Mm, 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 mm. Anyway, just to share my news with you. Shall we begin? Thank you, thank you. All right. I'm going to also invite you to do something different. I'm going to invite you to have your palms up. We're going to open in prayer. Would you pray with me? Loving God, help us to open our minds, open our hearts, and entire lives to you. Come, Holy Spirit. Speak to us. Teach, lead, and form us until we are more and more like you. For we are yours. In your name we pray, amen. So we just celebrated Easter Sunday. Now what? I mean, really, if we took the time to celebrate Christ's resurrection, what else do we need to do? Aren't we done with church now? Some, some people may think, or until Christmas, right? <laughs> some people may think or feel, good point, you read my sermon. That as long as they attend or recognize Christ at his birth and Christ at his resurrection, then that's that. Yet we know that's not the case. <laughs> In reality, we get to experience and we get to know God and know Jesus each and every day of our lives. Don't get me wrong, the resurrection is amazing, but it is not the end of the story. And it's not the end of our story. Just because Easter Sunday is over does not mean that we get to not attend worship or that we get to stop participating in ministries, small groups, or means that we get to stop giving. You know, as we tuck away the Easter bunny and our Easter clothes and decorations, we still have to stay busy. You know, Jesus didn't just give us the year off. Quite the opposite. He tells us to go and tell the story. 
that we are to live and to share to tell all the people about God and about a God whose love is so deep and whose love is so pure that he's willing to die for you, to give new life. It's like it keeps getting better, right? He's going to die for you to give you new life, but it's not just new life, it's eternal life. And it's something worth sharing and recognizing. So Jesus says this to his disciples in the Great Commission. You've heard me preach from this before. It's from Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So the Great Commission say, the Great Commission. It says, go, therefore, and make disciples of what? All. All nations. Huh. So it does not say, go and make disciples of those who you agree with, or go and make disciples of those who act like you do, or go and make disciples of those who look like you do, or who vote like you do. You get the, you get the image, you get the point? Mm-hmm. All. All. Again, there is a required response for those who follow God. We cannot make disciples if we aren't doing anything. (laughs) Again, last Sunday was awesome. We started the day at Hollywood Cemetery for Easter sunrise service with other United Methodist churches. I got to read like 200 verses for the bishop. It was great. Just kidding. I love the opportunity. Thank you, bishop. Then we came to New Song, and we got to worship with nearly 300 people with here in the worship center and then the children in the back to worship our risen Lord, and that's an awesome thing. Yet we, we the people, we the church, can ride this amazing energy, this momentum that we get from Easter, and then just let it slowly fade away. It reminds me of when you go on a mission trip, for when I've personally speaking, when I've gone on a mission trip, and you have all this energy from the week that had just taken place. The work and the tasks completed, relationships started, friendships with those on your crew, hopefully your homeowner, and then you return home, and you return to the summer schedule, and then that's just a week that just passed by. Yet the truth is that we are called to recognize the resurrected Christ more than just on Easter Sunday, or to recognize that more than just those moments or times during a mission week, but to have those moments, those pockets of energy, momentum to go and to serve every day of our lives. Those feelings of momentum, excitement, energy, and exhaustion (laughs) that we get from the mission trips is the same kind of passion that we are to serve God daily. The good news is that we do not have to wait for a mission trip to experience this. We do not have to wait for an Easter Sunday service to give us that assurance and hope of resurrection. Now, to be clear, both of these are important. It is important to go and serve, both in our backyard and in our community. So again, I remind you, register for Be the Church, because that's a good opportunity for us to live into that vision and to go and tell the people of this story, of the story of God. And we get the opportunity to do that here in different ways and ministries that we're so intentional of doing, but then also outside of our church. It is where we hear the call to make disciples of all nations, that it is important to worship on Easter Sunday, but it is important to worship every Sunday. Can I get an amen? Amen. Because each Sunday is a mini Easter. It's worth celebrating the resurrection. Again, we know the story. The feeling of this past Sunday was awesome. And it is awesome to have a packed worship center with overflow chairs in the back just to fit everyone in this space. Well, think of the early disciples on the first Easter and imagine the great sense of emotions that they all felt and experienced leading up to and immediately following Jesus' arrest, his crucifixion, and resurrection. So we're going to be focusing on different encounterments with Jesus post-resurrection. So that leads us to our other set of scripture and story that 
Pastor Chad alluded to last week. It is in Luke chapter 24, and we're going to start with verses 13 through 27. But since I read so much last week, I just want to keep it going. We're going to continue all the way to verse 32, so buckle up. Here we go. (laughs) Now, that same day, two of them were walking to a village called Emmaus. Say Emmaus. Emmaus. About a seven-mile walk from Jerusalem. They were talking, I know. (laughs) They were talking with each other about everything, everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. So Jesus, he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk? And try to picture this, all right? So they stood still, their face downcast. They were like, um, what? One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here? Are you dumb? (laughs) And then Jesus, I love this, Jesus says, What things? And then he's like, About Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. They crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early in the morning, but they couldn't find his body. So they came and told us what they had seen, and they saw a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb, and they found it. It was just as the women said, like Chad said last week, if you just listen the first time, men... <laughs> But they did not see Jesus. So Jesus, he said to them, How foolish are you, and how slow to believe all the prophets that have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses, Moses, and all the prophets, he himself explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. All the scriptures. I feel like there's a reason that they mentioned it was all the scriptures. Now, this was also a seven-mile walk. I don't know what their pace was, but he mentioned from Moses all the scriptures that were pertaining to him concerning himself. There's a lot that happens within these verses. (laughs) The two disciples on the road experienced a lot on this journey. It says that they were discussing all that had happened. If they were discussing what had happened, that means that they were sharing stories. They were sharing experiences. They were talking about the significance of the women's reports about Jesus and the great good news of his resurrection. So then Jesus just, you know, initiates the conversation as if it's not about him. (laughs) He's like, what things? The response then is given that summarizes the events that have transpired. And then that continues in verse 28. Well, what happens in verse 28? Let's go. As they approached the village that they were going, Jesus continued on as if, as if he were going further. I read that as if it's like he was like testing them. Like, okay, I know, that, I know, I know where they are going, but I'm just like, all right, are they going to invite me? Are they going to mention it? All right, so he goes as if he's going further. But they urge him strongly, stay with us. For it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. A little tidbit here. It's the evening time, so it's, it's almost nighttime. So they invite him. They urge him, please, stay with us. Remember what Jesus told his disciples about hospitality, something we're good at, but say hospitality. hospitality. Earlier in Luke 10, after sending the 70 and sending them out, Jesus gives them these instructions. Remain in the same house eating and drinking whatever they provide. So it's that aspect of being a good guest. But it is also what takes place next that is a key part of the story that causes the disciples to recognize who it is that they're sharing this encounter with. What happens? I'm glad you asked. Verse 30, here we go. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, And began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened. And they recognized him. 
and he disappeared from their sight. Then they ask each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Did you hear and catch what happened? Jesus, the guest, becomes the host at that table, at this table. Four actions here that Jesus does. He takes the bread. He blesses it. He breaks the bread, and he gives it to them. This is signature because the disciples recall this from feeding of the 5,000 and also Jesus doing this in the Last Supper. So the, res the resurrection becomes a reality to the disciples in two experiences. A Christ-centered interpretation of all the scriptures and breaking of the bread. This story illustrates how Christ is known. Through the preaching and sharing of scripture, each of us can do this in a simple, what did you get out of a, what, if you read this story and you just share what you got out of it, that's doing what the disciples were doing, just talking and walking, sharing what all that had happened. And is also through the celebration and the remembrance of the Lord's Supper. Their eyes were opened. Just like the disciples, it is through the participation of word and table that their eyes were opened and that we all get to have that same experience. The eye-opening experience to live, to recognize, to feel and hear God. Not only were their eyes opened, but it says this in the final verse, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? It's like they knew, but they didn't know. <laughs> I mean, they realized that after. The good news is that Jesus is always with us. He, he says that in the Great Commission, right? Christ tells us to go, but also with the assurance. He doesn't just say, you got it, go ahead and go, just do your thing. You do you, boo, that's what Chad says. <laughs> <laughs> he, he told them to go, but he also gave them this hope that I am with you always to the end of the age. Our hope is to see God at work, but also to share how God has impacted our life and how he's impacted our faith. And for me, again, I spoke personally to going on mission trips and how you can have that energy, that ride that momentum, and then just let it slowly trickle away. Same with the amazing ride of momentum and energy from Easter. But the impact of sharing our faith, sharing God in little ways, can impact our faith in our own lives. And so I have a letter from a mission trip that I did in 2014. I forget where we went. Um, but... This letter was from the grandson of the house that we were working on. His name's Deshaun. He says, sorry it's not much, but thank you for the amazing job that you guys are doing. Hopefully this will place a smile on your face, just like it did me to see so many smiling faces helping out to make this house look new again. Also, thank you for the food. My shout out goes to the master of the grill. <laughs> Because on our sites, we had crew lunches and devotions, and every time we would break for lunch, we would invite the homeowner and their family or friends or whatever to just join us for lunch. And he finishes by saying, I just wanted to let you guys know that the house looks way better than before. And hopefully, if you're around, to stop by and chat. You guys are all wonderful people, and I wish and hope you the best with the rest of your summer. Signed, Deshaun Brown. <clears throat> I keep this... So we actually ended up going back to, we stayed at a high school that week, and we asked the office um, if we could use a copier, so everyone on our crew got a copy of the letter from Deshaun. And so I keep it in my Bible, and I was like, oh, this is a, a good personal story to add to it. And so that's just a little testament that just through sharing can impact lives and faith. And I read you this letter because it was a trip after that week, we were all exhausted, yet we were filled with excitement and lots of energy, right? And that energy was probably from all that had happened during the week. But for me, 
I resonated with because of what and how Deshaun expressed it. I just wanted to let you guys know that the house looks way better than before. And hopefully if you're around to stop and chat. You are all wonderful people. I love this because here's a young man that did not have to do this. I don't know how old he was. But the goal is to make the house look better than before. In a way, make it unrecognizable. What I hear in that is the ability to offer transformation. From an old, beaten up, worn down house with a roof with many holes and leaks to a new, strong, lasting roof. And I love also he mentioned the invitation to just stop and chat like the disciples were doing. A lot had just happened, right? We know the story, so we get to enter Good Friday recognizing Sunday's a coming, right? We say that. Imagine all the things that they felt, yet they still took the time in probably the most critical point in their faith to intertwine with each other, just like that video said. You know, the trees were doing for each other what they could not do on their own, and we do the same thing. God does the same with us. The opportunity to make a new house, a new life. God calls us to go and to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. To do so with a heart burning with passion for God. May it be so. Amen. Would you pray with me? Oh, before we pray. I, keep, I, did, I do this a lot. Um, I want to remind folks <laughs> that we have our joy boxes in the back. And we give. And again, like we said, just because it's Easter Sunday doesn't mean we just get to stop doing the things that we do, whether it be ministry or outreach or learning and finding new ways to be innovative in ministry. That's why we have these little meetings after, after worship to do things in King William because we want to say and be the church in different aspects because it's not just a, a list that says, oh, you need to do this and that's, it's, it's this way or the highway. There's lots of so many avenues that God can be at work. I know and can probably attest that each of you can testify how God has been at work in your life and it's going to be different in your life than it was in mine. And that's a good thing. It shows how God can work in each and every one of us. And so that can be through our giving, through the giving of our time, talents, gifts, service, and witness, to recognize that our giving changes lives. It gives people small things, large things. It gives people the opportunity to grab a box of food from Cornerstone Community Development Center. And I thank the people that went there yesterday to help volunteer. And if you're looking for more ways to get involved in not just King William stuff, but any of the outreach and many opportunities and ministries of this church, let us know. It's a, it, it, this is a church family, and I love it. And I love that we care about the community that we serve in, but also the God that we serve and love so much. And so I hope and pray that we're able together to do that, whether that be through giving in our joy boxes in the back or through participating, lunch bunch, small groups, different things like that. And if you, and if you got that burning desire like the disciples did or like our friend John Wesley did at, at an experience, just let us know. And we'd love to get you connected so that you can feel welcome and um, safe in your own space as well. Because we're all on a, on a journey to grow and we get to have that journey together. Can I get an amen? amen? Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that you are a God who instructs us to go and make disciples, but you are also the God who is with us every single step of the way. So be with us, O oh God, as we continue in worship this day. Be with us in the songs we pray, the prayers we pray, and in the meal that we share. This is a buffet of grace where we recognize that you are with us and we are nurtured and nourished, fed spiritually and spiritually here this day. Help us to recognize that we are being fed, but then also to go out and to feed others too, physically and spiritually. Be with us, O oh God, we pray in your name. Amen. There was a journey that was seven miles long. We just did a 5K. Uh, some of you ran, walked, jogged, galloped, uh, all uh, 2.6 or whatever it ends up being. 
That's wrong, right? I knew I was shying you a little bit. I knew you wouldn't let me do that. On, on uh, the memory scale, I, I've talked to some of you before. I, I'm just amazed at how you can remember the weather on a certain event, what someone was wearing, their, their fragrance, uh, whether they were hot or cold. It, you, you remember things. You're, you're really, you're, you're pretty on point with this memory. But there's something that Jesus knew that a lot of us are going to forget. And that has to do with the whole event of Easter. You know, it, it, what strikes me is if, if we were designing a script, if we just put a Hollywood meeting together right after church one day, and we said, you know, what would be the pinnacle of what we need to get done? What would be the finish line? Where would we draw it? And how would we cross it? I think Easter's a pretty big deal, right? We would stop. We would say, this is good. This is the place where the sequels end. This is like, we don't need another season. We, at friends, it's going to get to year 10. We don't need 11. We, we got a dead guy back to life. This is good enough. Bring out the, the strobe. Bring out the spot. Bring out the noise. Bring out the orchestra. And Jesus pops back in, and he's like, I got some more. Like, turns out we're going to do another sequel. I got a few more. Hey, hey, guys, in the upper room. Upper room. You could say things like, I, I bet, I, I bet, hey, I'm just going to walk alongside him. I, you know what? I'm not even going to let him figure it out. I'm going to say, to me, this is like the funnier side of Jesus. This is the lighter side of, I'm going to see how long I can walk with them until they figure it out. I'm going to drop clues. I'm going to use words. I'm even going to say them in the same pronunciation. I'm going to give the same enunciation. I'm going to do everything the same as I always did. Let's see when they figure it out. This will be fun. Hey, Trinity, part A, part B, part C is going to take this one down the road. And we read where, by their own narration, they put it together in this story. It took seven miles. It took a restaurant. It took bread. And it took memory. All the way back to when Jesus was feeding thousands of people. It said he had 12 baskets, and add after all the leftovers, he broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, there's something about today's Last Supper, Holy Communion, Eucharist. They go by all the names. There's something about today's experience. It's post-resurrection. Jesus has been tried and died, and now he's been crucified. But he comes to them at a table that is different. It's a table much more of the everyday, not the, the sacrament. It's not necessarily the, the, the set-asideness of a, of a whole high holy day. It's just, let's get together for dinner. Like, if we were to go over to Riverbound today, and Riverbound served rolls, which they, they should, maybe, Let's change the restaurant. If we were to go to Texas Roadhouse and they just bring you the roll or a Cracker Barrel, I'm putting you in the state of mind, and they just bring the bread, there's nothing odd about that. You might ask, could we get some extra butter or jelly? But with Jesus' bread, they didn't do all that. That's, that's, just, that's just entitlement, isn't it? Jelly. But it says that Jesus would have taken the bread, a very mundane routine, and it says that he would have broken it. Everything he did had symbolism and meaning, representational connection, that I am a gift that represents life. I will be with you to the end of the age. I will never leave you nor forsake you. How many things make that level of commitment and promise to you? Christ our Lord invites to this table, his table, not ours, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in faith in God.
I don't know where you are today on your spiritual journey. Some of you may have never started this journey. Some of you may be pretty far along on it. Some of you may have said stuff, done stuff, thought stuff that kind of led you away from God all the while God's inviting you back towards God. If I were to ask, how many of you had a really good week? How many of you got to the point where you were like, I did it. I totally didn't sin. I got everything right. <laughs> like, I don't even get 10 minutes with that kind of thought. But you, you, oh, you. <laughs> and I think about God who sent Jesus, who was at a table. It doesn't say that Jesus partook of the bread himself, for it represented his own body, his own life. It doesn't say he took of the cup, for it represented his sacrifice, his own blood. I want you to think about who was at the table, though. A young man named Judas, the betrayer. And then I think about you and me. Today, I'm not thinking Pastor Jeremy required us to walk seven miles to earn our spot. Amen. I, I don't think you were required to be perfect this week. But you are being asked, do you love God? Do you understand God loves you? Do you recognize you're not perfect? Do you recognize that the world is broken? Do you see that God has made a way through Jesus to find our way in faith to a deeper space in relationship and connection? to God. If you can answer yes in those directions, if you can understand that despite you and despite me, God still has love for a world that did not deserve it but has certainly been offered it. There's something powerful in that. We call it a sacrament because it is sacred and it's a direct command of God. The other one Jeremy touched on today is to go and baptize and invite everybody you know into a relationship to be with God forever. It's kind of a neat opportunity. John Wesley calls this a means of grace. Uh, some of you would say, what's that? Every time you come, it's supposed to connect you a little bit closer to God. Today, I invite you to a means of grace, a buffet of grace. It's designed that you and I in this little morsel get connected with God and reminded once again, even in our lack of memory, of who God is. It's a removal of the blinders to see clearly who is right before us, God our creator, sustainer, and maker. Would you pray with me? God, over the elements of bread and the cup, over elements of people and mistakes, over understanding relationships, the successes and the failures that they represent, over taking not for granted, but in a serious way, the places where you have offered to us second chances and opportunities that we do not deserve. God, together with us, communion is not supposed to be a time where we just come and get real guiltified. But it is supposed to be a reminder of a power that is so great it takes over even darkness and death itself. It gives life and light to all. It invites love to lead away even when we have lost ours. And so, God, I ask you to be that you would continue to not only be with us who receive the, the bread of the field, the juice of the vine, but that you would even go so far as to bless what simple representations we have today. Straight from a, a store, I'm sure, but Lord, they mean something. Bless the bread. And bless the cup. Bless all who receive it. That this day we may see you. And we may understand who you are 
and we may recall in our heart and in our faith that you have done a tremendous amount to love us despite us. And for all that we've messed up, God, may we at least get the one thing right, where we acknowledge who you are and who we are not, where whom we will follow matters more than where we've been, where our yes to you will take us to that place of grace this day and all the times we recall it. For Lord, we love you, we need you, and we ask you to lead us today. As we come before you, fill us to overflowing for this, Lord, we pray in Christ's name and God's people would say, amen. We who are broken in a broken world have been brought together. We who are many come as one, one in faith, one in baptism, one in the Lord. The cup that was broken and on full display that night was lifted as a cup of salvation. Both have been prepared for you and for me. Today we will have two stations as we always do. This is intinction, is a big word. Uh, it will be handed to you a small piece of bread. You will dip that into the cup. And as you receive that and commune with God, we invite you to go back to your seats in that way. If you need a, a prepackaged element or if you'd like for one to be gluten-free, our gluten-free prepackaged elements will be here in the center. I will have those. So feel free to make your way uh, to where I am uh, if you need gluten-free and prepackaged. Today, our children are going to come in and find all of the lost parents on aisle four. As they do, our youth, I believe, are coming in as well. And so, uh, parents, if you could kind of help your kids find you. Some of you hide a little bit from them. Our servers are going to come up, and we're going to get in place. Our team is going to sing a song today. And as our team sings, we'll remember, a goodbye from Jesus is not the end of the story at all, but just the beginning. Friends, as we get ready and our families get reunited, won't you come? to be I conquered 
death and I hold the keys where I go you will go to someday there is much to do here before you
Would you pray? God, sometimes we don't put it together until we're already in the car and on our way home. Someone today may understand Jesus in a whole new way. For whatever reason, it may not have ever clicked that you didn't only live and die, but you were risen. And you did that in a format of love. And you did it in such a way where you not only taught some of the most important lessons of life that we could ever have learned just before you died, but you came back to reemphasize a couple of points. And you told us, gosh, I love you guys. And I want to send you to go out and change a world. And it's in that love and in that change that you got to make sure it's more than just friendship. It's relationship. you got to make sure it's more than just relationship. It is, it is heart work. It is hard, open heart work. It is, despite the gunk of the world, a perfect Savior placed upon an imperfect tree, placed in a never-before-used tomb, risen to change everything about everything, including us even still through today and beyond. God, your message still rings true, not hollow, it rings true. You love us, and we're to love others. Maybe this week we commit to not complicating such an easy message. You loved us and called us to love others. It's really that simple. Oh, Lord, it takes everything we've got, so help us to rise in faith and sing one more song, but then to take it with us everywhere we may go. This, Lord, we pray in the name of Christ, the risen Lord, as all God's people say, amen. Stand and join us. We introduced this at the top of service, so I know that you know a little bit of it.
for being here this week. We will see you next Sunday.